Ford just recently unveiled the updated 2020 line of Super Duty trucks and with it came a big surprise, a 7.3 liter V8. This new engine came as a shock to most of the people in the automotive community and believe it or not, this actually means that Ford has the second largest production engine behind only the 8 liter W16 from Bugatti. Why does this engine even exist though? What about this makes any sense in today's market? Let's just, we'll come back to that question, but let's take a look at the specs quick and kind of go over where it fits in the lineup, how it compares to the competition. And then we'll come back to why does this even exist? Because it's quite a surprise from someone who has been pushing the EcoBoost engines on you for years, telling you you don't need a V8, you can go to a twin turbo V6. And then they come out with this massive V8. It, it kind of came out of nowhere, which is why it took so many people by surprise. But let's really kind of dive into the specs here and unpack this a little bit more. So Ford has yet to release the horsepower and torque numbers of this beast, which has been nicknamed the Godzilla for obvious reasons. They did, however, confirm that it should be the most powerful engine in its class, which would be gasoline-powered 2500 and 3500 trucks. That should be fairly self-explanatory, however, with 7.3 liters to work with. But if we look at the competition, Chevy offers 401 horsepower from a 6.6 liter in the Silverado HD trucks, and Ram offers 410 horsepower from their 6.4 liter Hemi. So we know it'll make at least 410 horsepower, but that's unfortunately all we know. We also don't really have a good point of reference to compare this engine to for the sake of speculation because Ford is taking a bit of a different approach than they have in recent years with the design of this engine. In some ways, Ford is actually going with a more low-tech approach, which is kind of cool to see in today's automotive industry. The 7.3 liter is actually a push rod design, which is an engine that Ford has been staying away from for quite some time now. Ford's other V8s, the 5 liter Coyote, is a dual overhead cam and the 6.2 liter is a single overhead cam design. But going back to a pushrod design has some benefits. These motors are lighter weight and take up less physical space, which is very helpful for fitting this beast of an engine into existing platforms without too much modification. The weight savings is also key, but this was still way more than a 6.2 liter engine. As for specs, the 7.3 uses a cast iron block, four steel crankshaft, and two valves per cylinder with variable valve timing. Pushrod motors are also more durable and generally simpler, which makes them cheaper to produce and easier to maintain, which is really a winning situation all around. Also, it's what the competition, Chevy, and Ram still use. So let's get back to why this exists. Personally, I consider this engine to be a stroke of marketing genius, essentially. Ford is grabbing headlines here all over the place with this massive engine, is creating excitement and tons of free publicity, and the average consumer who looks at a spec sheet for a Super Duty and compares it to the competition, they can instinctively tell you that 7.3 liter must be better than 6.6 or 6.4, right? It seems pretty simple. And with gas prices the way they are, there's no indication of that changing soon, so people are less worried about efficiency. But outside of the marketing world and showing a bigger number on paper, how does this engine make any sense, especially coming from a company that spent millions of dollars and years convincing you to buy an EcoBoost and that you don't need this V8 in your F-150? Obviously, this is a factor in why so many people are caught by surprise here. So who is this engine for? It's obviously a market for people who need more than the 6.2 liter in terms of power or towing, but why would they not just get a diesel then, especially if they're looking at heavy duty trucks? So there seems to be a pretty small market for me of people that would fit above a 6.2 liter, but below a diesel engine and would buy in this realm. Obviously the 7.3 is gonna cost more than a 6.2, but to make any sort of sense at all, it has to cost less than the diesel options. So. Yes, maybe it fits into a financial gap there between a 6.2 and the diesel, but does it really make any sense? Ah, not really. It's such a small market. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Personally, I see it having such a slim market that doesn't make a ton of sense, but maybe you guys have a different read on it. If you're looking for a Super Duty truck, would you buy one with the 7.3 liter option? Drop a comment down below, let me know why or why not. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and get subscribed for more great videos like this one. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.